Oh, did you guys ever see the uh, Battletoads four-player race on YouTube? It's super genius and Nintendo Capri Sun and P Call four 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 and uh, Proton John. It's so funny. It's like the the epitome of Schadenfreude. They they uh, start like they start as out as a race to see who can finish first, and and then they realize pretty quickly that it will be. A miracle if any one of them managed to finish the game at all. Yes, I didn't know about the game, but apparently it's known for its extreme difficulty. I mean, I've been doing like the, the speed runs on Donkey Kong Country Returns, and some of the stuff in that game makes what I'm doing look easy. So pressing that switch changes the destination of the central lift. But to get to there, you have to press the switch in the other room. So you do have to go through and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I think it's that you go to the right, you press the switch that gives you access to an extra chamber on the left. And then on the left, you can press the switch that changes the destination of this lift. And this is the Cloister of Trials, or at least it was. The temple's okay, but you think that out of all the people don't hanging out there, throw you. somebody would have figured this out already, and it would have been unlocked. Well, maybe they had figured it out. They just didn't have the lift at the setting that would take you down. Maybe someone... <laughs> there are no random bat there are no random battles down here. Only there are a preset number of fights that will that will come up when you try to pass into a certain area for the first time. So when you kill all of those monsters there won't be any more. They seem to be tougher versions of the typical fiends though. Is there a trick to this? Which and that's sort of illustrated by the fact that they are larger than usual. At least that fly is. I guess it's Yeah, the the trials in Final Fantasy X were of the puzzle variety. I remember this one not <laughs> monsters eat. Monsters eat. I don't remember this being the most frustrating of them. I remember a Makalania temple being pretty, pretty frustrating. I remember the first one sort of being like, when I got through it, I was like, wait, that was a puzzle? Because it, it, it just seemed so straightforward to me that I didn't even see it as that. As that. But then the later ones, it's like, yeah, this is a puzzle. There is gunk on my computer, and I don't know how it got there. Oh yeah, I'm in terms of my like situation physically where I am right now, it's a lot better than the last time because over Memorial Day weekend, I went to that that wonderful blue and yellow colored land of furniture with strange names. If you know what I'm referring to. You guys have IKEA? But you know what it is. Yeah. Ikea is a mythical land full of furniture. Full of parts that can be assembled into furniture. This is your lucky day. Oh, if you're the actual gallery, it's like this winding labyrinth of kitchenware and couches. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I got... I got a thing, I think the desk that I got was called Borgsieu, and the chair that I got was called Torkel. Torkel. Torkel 
Anyway, so I actually have an important point to make here. If you see, if you see one of these things cast something called Pointless, then whatever character is affected, you want to get rid of that because it won't do anything to you in battle, but after battle, it stops you from getting any experience points. Now, actually, scratch that. It does do something during battle because you can earn ability points during battle, and it also stops that. So yeah, if someone is gets hit with Pointless, then then, yeah, you, you want to take care of that as soon as possible. Otherwise, well, like the name says, the uh, a fight for that character will be pointless. In more ways than one. And Riku learned Full Cure. I believe she has now mastered the White Mage Dress Sphere. Oh, that's a lot of healing items. I guess that's because that guy was oversold. Yeah, this was the Cloister of Trials. You can see down at the, uh, the bottom of the main menu thingy. Alright, yes, she has mastered the White Mage Dress Sphere. So I'm monkeying with something. Her garment grid, probably. Yeah, it, it's worth it to fight the enemies here because the, besides the experience, you also get access to these treasure chests. And for once, it actually makes sense that no one has opened them because there are these big bad monsters around here. These guys are probably the least uh, troublesome of the monsters around here. They can poison you, but I think that's about it. What did you say? No, it's not really fun, but you can usually deal with it, because... Like, in some Final Fantasy games it really hurts, but in this one it doesn't hurt that much. And apparently Riku had never made the White Mage to a Thief transition before. I suppose if you don't mind going directly into the line of fire. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's like whack-a-mole. I, I get rid of the poison on one character and, and another character immediately gets poisoned. Uh, like I've said, there will be things to deal with neg negative status effects on mass later in this session. Not just to get rid of them, but to prevent them. And now the entire party is poisoned. Man, these guys are really beating me up. In Kingdom of Loathing, if you if you lose all your hit points, then you fall under a condition called beaten up. And if you look at the condition description, it says, You've had the crap beaten out of you. You're going to need some more crap.
I remember the last playthrough I did, Pain had almost finished learning that ability by now. I don't know what I'm doing differently this time around. More healing stuff. Yeah, like I said, if you are going back in an area in, in this place, the Cloister of Trials, if you are going through an area you have already explored, you will not encounter any new enemies. Yes, it does. I really should start healing up between battles. The thing is there are lots of things that will heal you that you can use only in battle. I guess I was trying to use that stuff rather than stuff that actually gets consumed. I'm showing all these battles because they are all scripted battles, even though some of the enemies do repeat. Interesting name for that enemy, Vertigo. There's a U2 song called Vertigo, and it starts with the words, Uno, dos, tres, catorce. Oh, you know it. I'm at a place called Vertigo, yes, that's right. Everything I wish I didn't know, but it's real. It's a pretty good song. Yeah, it came out, I don't know, what, mid, early, mid 2000s? And it was infused to hell and back by an advertising company. Yeah. <laughs> Continue, now that I realize it, it sort of continues a theme that they had, because on their previous album they had a song called Elevation. Which was also abused <laughs> by advertising companies. And I think there was also like, there was a music video connected with Tomb Raider or something. Anyway, we're fighting more desserts. Like I didn't I didn't know what a flan was until I knew it as a monster from these games. <laughs> what do you think I'm after? Yes, or in something that is almost a pudding. It is, is it, uh, is it from Spain? Is that where it comes from? French pudding. It's rebellious. No, flan, I mean. Flan? I'm not sure where flan is from. Hmm. Shit, I'm gonna look at it right now. I was just going to do that. Spanish and French is where it's yeah. supposedly originated. See also quiche. <laughs> Blink, I don't, you, I don't know if you remember, but I'm laughing because that's the nickname for, for um, Colin's, Colin's sister, Colin being the other half of Father Spleen. 